stop travel and let it cut itself off and then I proceed because uh, I don't want those things hitting me in the face or landing on my arm or whatever because they uh, they are they are very warm okay so I'm just about out to where my very first I'm just about out to where the very first ring is if you guys can see that in the in the shot Okay, just for shits and giggles here, we'll uh, measure this thing and see where we're at. Okay. Okay. We're at uh, two inch, 260, basically 55 or 60 thousandths. Yeah, basically 60 thousandths. So I have 40 thousandths left to go. And again, this is not a critical measurement by any means, but again, just to practice, you know, as if it were a critical. So I'm watching my dial now, so I'm moving it five thousandths at a time. And uh, so this is ten. I moved to ten on the dial, so we're twenty on the uh, on the part. And because I know I had to go forty. Move it another five here. So this should be a total of 30. And uh, according to my calipers here, I've taken off uh, 20. So. So I moved another five on the dial. should give me 10 on the part. Yeah, those strings I'm cutting off there are like, they're pretty damn sharp. Okay, so that did. It gave me exactly ten thousandths. So, I have another ten to go. So, we'll move this five on the dial. We should be, should be good, good to go with this part. Because this is my last cut, I'm going to try to just feed this in. My chips are working, they're cooperating, thank God. Okay, so that's it. 
That looks like a really good finish on there, too. Oh, yeah. My goodness. Look at that, guys. That's pretty friggin' sweet. For, for garbage metal, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> and again, I know that using my calipers isn't the most accurate tool to be measuring this stuff, but um, according to this, here I'm going to lock it down so you guys can see that I'm literally one thousandths, just a tad bit over one thousandths off. So, again, in this uh, neck of the woods, that's friggin' close enough, especially for what this is. Um, man, look at that finish, you guys. That's friggin' beautiful. Again, this is uh, teaching me, I know what material this is. Um, I know that I'm using a welded-on carbide uh, cutter here. So I keep that in the back of my mind. If a job comes in of the same material or I use the same material, if it's 4140, you know, if it's, uh, you know, 12L14, you know, uh, you know, 1018 uh, cold roll or, you know, that sort of thing, um, you know, then, um, you know, maybe I, maybe I um, can't use that tool or it won't do as good a job. But for what it's worth, um, I kind of have a pretty good memory on things, and so I can remember that using this material, um, this cutter right there seems to work very, very well, as you can see. <clears throat> so, anyway, all right, so now um, the next step is um, I use a different tool. which is right here. I use this guy right here and I found him in my collection. Um, I did not make this. So whoever did, man, thank you very much because uh, this thing works like a charm. So I just went ahead and uh, um, I didn't dress it up today, but I dressed it up last night and uh, it's still friggin' sharp. That thing is like a razor. So is what this does now is it uh I'll have to change my angle to the dangle here a little bit because I did uh, move this just a minute ago. But <clears throat> I can move my carriage stop because uh, I got to relocate it to a different position. And so we will try to get our I'm trying to establish, you know, my seven degrees basically is from what I understand that seven degrees seems to be like the magic number. And uh, I'm just eyeballing this. I don't really have any gauge to go by. And so by this this being seven degrees, I've, I've kind of ground this down to where this gives me my seven degrees on the face right here as well. So, um... That being said, I can tighten down my tool post. And that should give me my numbers. Okay, so now the depth on this thing, um, if I remember correctly, is 300. Yeah, I think it's 300 thousandths. Let me check my other part here make sure uh, oh yeah here yep it's 300 thousandths even is how much I have to take off of this top lip right here so I set this at my 300 thousandths as you can see and um, I still have room from the end of my caliper to my jaw. So that tells me that's how much room I have right there to play with so I don't mess anything up. So, um, again, I eyeball this. You guys can see the, uh, the distance right here. 
between my cutter and the jaw. Um, I just move this up ever so close like this. And uh, that should be it right there without getting out a, a set of feeler gauges or whatever. I'm probably uh, I'm probably 50 thousandths away from, from my jaw right now, to the tip of that cutter. So now I'm going to um, back this off with my compound just to make sure. And then I will come in here and make my cut in here and then measure it to find out how deep I am. So again, we'll check this. Okay, it stops against my com I'm against my carriage stop so I don't hit my jaws get anything thrown in my face that would not be very much fun okay so now um, believe it or not I can actually crank this thing in to 50 thousandths once I get once I establish my first cut which I will here in a second but I can move my dial in 50 thousandths which made I'm taking off a hundred thousandths off of the part um, at for each pass that I that I make so um, this cutter like I said it, it works very well and it's uh, it's very sharp so here we go this first pass will just be to true this up basically because like I said the water jet doesn't turn it exactly round it does a pretty good job but it's not perfect by any means Okay, so now I'm, you know, 300 thousandths on my calipers here and uh, looking straight down on the top of this, you guys can't see, but back here, um, I am ever so close to that number. I'm probably about maybe 10, maybe 20 thousandths off of total depth. So what I'll do is just leave it here, and I'll cut, cut, cut until I get my dimension, and then I will do my final pass to get it um, to depth this way, to cut it in this way, so um, all the parts will be the same. All right, so I'm going to take another skim pass, just a few thousands here, because you guys can probably saw just a second ago that... Uh, it's not true. It's not trued up yet. And it's still you can see by the uh, the little um, wisp of, of color change that uh, it's still not trued up. So I'm going to take another 10 off of here. And this should true it up. It does. Okay, so now um, I'm at 20 on my dial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin it all the way around 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 to zero. And uh, so what? That would be uh, 80 thousandths or no? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Yeah, 80 thousandths. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of metal. So, uh, I don't know. I, I don't think I've cut this much off in one shot, but uh, let's see what happens. See if it'll do it or not. Yeah, it's pushing it. All right, so we're going to go back. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Here's 50 right here. This is what I've been doing before. And it's able to handle it.
Yep, 50,000. Have a little bit more to go here. Okay, so we're only going to go 30 on this one just so I can get back to my zero on my dial without me having to get my screwdriver and changing it. <laughs> So as you guys can see, this is now sh taking shape. Like the other parts. I think I'm gonna have to dress my little, my, my cutter here. It's working, but it doesn't seem to be working as easy as it was last night. So it's probably uh, just needs to be dressed up here a touch. But anyway, like I said, uh, if you compare, if I can show this one. Well, anyway, there you go. So that basically looks like this now. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this down to depth, obviously. And uh, right now I'm cutting this. I'm cutting this dimension right here um, on here and uh, once I get that done then I'll chamfer the the edge right here chamfer the inside right here and uh, you can see I mean wow that's amazing look at the finish in here and look at the finish on this I mean that's like totally rough right there and that is absolutely baby butt smooth it's also hotter than shit <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's amazing the difference of the cutter makes. So this is my old the first cutter that I was using on the other five pieces, and that's the the new one that I just used on that one. So that's pretty uh, pretty amazing. So anyway, you guys, uh, that's pretty much it. I'll uh, bring you back when I uh, get ready to flip this thing around. Stay tuned. Okay, you guys, Razor here again. Um, I've been carving on this thing for a little bit now, so I've got my mic out here set at the uh, the dimension it's supposed to be set at, which I believe that's correct, Amundo. Let me check it real quick. <clears throat> so, according to uh, my other part here. Yeah, it's just a just a touch fat. Okay, so yeah, that's the dimension right there. So it's um, I guess it's two inch, eight hundred and uh, or seven hundred rather, and ninety eight. Yeah, two inches, seven hundred and ninety, ninety-seven. No, ninety-eight, ninety-nine would be eight hundred thousand. So, anyway, let's see what's what, what would that be? Seventy, yeah, eight hundred would be ninety, ninety-nine, ninety-eight. So it's seven hundred. Wow. Gotta have to think about this for a minute. 798 and 4 tenths is what that measures, I think. So, um, I just uh, hold my mic up here like this, just for shits and giggles, to kind of give me an idea as to how much I have to take off. 
And I know there's at least 20 thousandths that I have to take off of there. So I'm just going to dial in 10 on the dial. And uh, it'll give me 20 on the part. And then I can check it. If it's a little under, I don't care because uh, this is basically a, a, like a press fit by means of a hammer <laughs> to uh, um, shove them into the end of the uh, the tubes on the bumper. So again, this is not a critical measurement. It's just somewhere to get me close. If I'm under by ten thousandths, it's like who cares? It's you know, it's still going to be a slip fit. Because when this is all said and done, this lip right here, if you can imagine the tube going over this and butting up against this edge right here, um, I'm going to drill a hole in the tube right here, and I'm going to spot weld the tube to this surface right here, to this ledge. And that's what's going to hold these things in to the tube. Um, this finished dimension right here is going to be a little bit proud of the diameter of the tube. Um, probably by maybe a sixteenth of an inch, maybe, if that, maybe a thirty-second, somewhere in there. Um, but I do not want to weld this edge right here um, to the tube. I'm going to do all my welding down here on this. And they're just going to be spot weld. So um, I'm going to, you know, section this thing into four equal, you know, dis or different uh, four four equal increments and uh, spot welded in there accordingly so let's uh let's check our dimension here and uh wow that's a pretty damn good guess that is absolutely money right there Yeah, there we go. I may be uh, four tenths. This is three tenths. Wow. That's pretty damn close to the other one here. Okay, so that's what the uh, that's what the first one measured that I just did, that I just checked against. So we're uh, we're basically just a shade before the twenty three on the dial. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and this one. It's just a, it's just a hair under, uh, over twenty-two, so that's within basically a thousandths, one thousandths. So uh, we're calling that good. We are done with that. Um, we're done with that project as far as uh, cutting. So now, just gotta chamfer my edges. <clears throat>
and I just eyeball these things that outside that's just to help get it into the tube and that is to break that edge right there because Adam says so You're supposed to chamfer all your edges I heard him say that once or twice I think I'm going to go a little bit more on the outside one there. Good. And we'll take our file. Very carefully knock off any burrs on there. feels pretty good and I'm not even going to go anywhere near this because the file will catch that jaw and shove it in my hand and that won't be any fun on a Saturday afternoon I got better things to do than go to the emergency to get a file taken out of my hand all right so um, I see that this video is an hour and 34 minutes oh my god so uh, anyway, um, if you guys are still with me <laughs> through all of this, um, I just got to turn it around now. So uh, that, this, looks like this now, except it's better. The finish on this one's way better than the one on this one. So uh, that's kind of cool. Uh, anyway, guys, um, that's it, man. I'm going to turn this thing around. The only thing I need to do now is to... Um, I turn it around and I and I sh put the jaws in here to hold this piece um, when I flip it around. And then all I need to do is, is turn this down to its final dimension. And I face it on the on the back side on the back side now, face that back side to my width of the of the lip on that thing. And uh, that's it. Then uh, I will be done with all six of these pieces. And uh, I'll show you um, how they go into the bumper and how I'm going to weld them in there um, to make them look nice and pretty and no weld to be seen. And yet they're going to stay in there um, basically permanently. So anyway, um, you guys, thanks for hanging with me for all this time and uh, putting up with my, like I said, unorthodox machining methods. Um, but as you can see, you know, I'm, I'm able to pull this off. Um, there it is. There's the proof, as Stan keeps saying. If you didn't videotape it, it didn't happen. <laughs> so, um, there it is, you guys. I'm, uh, I'm totally stoked, man. This thing, out of the six that I've done, this one absolutely came out beautiful. And I think it's all because I made one simple um, tool change. So... That's, I think that is the hardest thing for me to try to understand is what tool do you use for a particular operation or um, in using a particular tool for a certain material. Um, I guess, you know, either if somebody's out there has got those kind of answers. Um, I know Dale Derry started up a little video a while back about, you know, about that very thing. Um, and he, I believe he said he was going to do a follow-up on it and either I missed it or he hasn't done it yet or whatever. But, uh, 
you know, that's what I'm constantly trying to learn is, you know, what tool do you use for what operation and for what material. So again, if anybody out there has got um, some answers for me, um, please feel free to chime in and, you know, help an old, help an old guy out um, that's trying to uh, make some pretty parts. So until then, everyone be safe out there. And uh, again, thank you for uh, subscribing to my channel. Um, I know there's nothing to write home to mom about. I'm just a little simple country boy out here just having some fun and trying to learn something at the same time. So uh, thanks for hanging with me, you guys, and uh, appreciate all the support. Um, all the comments, like I said, have always been really good. Um, I got a great bunch of followers, and uh, so thank you all for that, every each and every one of you guys. So um, I'm still waiting for my first girl to chime in. So uh, any of you gals out there, feel free to chime in and say, hey, so this is Razor saying so long for now, you guys. Take care. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.